Most of the time, we landscape photographers like everything in our photos to be nice and sharp. Unfortunately, that's not always possible in camera. In this video, I want to share with you a really easy way that you can focus stack two exposures using gradient masks in Photoshop. Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Thanks ever so much for joining me again. This week, I want to talk about focus stacking and a really simple way that we can stack two exposures in Photoshop using gradient masks. Now, this is the image that we're going to be working on today. It's an image that I captured at the Kentmere Reservoir last week. Now, if you want to see the story behind how I captured this image, then please keep watching. But if you're only here to see how I do the focus stacking, there's a link in the description below that will jump you forward in time so you can get straight to the nitty gritty. Good morning everybody and welcome to a beautifully still Kentmere Reservoir. When conditions are this good, you know you're in for a treat. These are precisely the conditions that I was hoping for for this particular location. Kentmere is not particularly difficult to get to, but it is a fairly long walk to the reservoir from the village. It's about three miles. Uh, some of it's over quite rough ground, so it's taken me about an hour to hike in this morning. And so I do tend to reserve Kentmere for times when I know we're gonna get reflections like this. And it's actually been over a year since I was last here. So you can imagine my delight when I got here this morning and saw that conditions were exactly as I've been hoping for. And one of the things I've learned over the years is that when you get to a location like this and you've got the reflections that you want, you need to get your shots in the bag. It's very likely that the wind will pick up at any moment and we'll lose those reflections. And in fact, I can just see a patch of water that's just starting to be disturbed. So I've got the shots in the bag already and now I want to talk you through the composition. So as you can see, I've got the camera set very low to the ground. I'm going for a pretty typical me kind of shot. So obviously I've got some rocks in the foreground as foreground interest and then I have the mountain in the distance and then the reflection of the mountain. So this is a, a bottom to top composition. I want the eye to go to the rocks in the foreground and then lead up to the mountain in the distance. I am using a couple of filters this morning. Uh, I've got a grad on there because we've got quite a white sky. I want to darken that down a little bit. What I'd like to do in post is sort of bring that even, uh, even further down and create an even more dramatic looking sky. Um, I've also got the polarizer on there as well. And I've got that cranked to the max. What that's doing is that's cutting through the glare in the water, allowing you to see all of the rocks, excuse me, all of the rocks uh, in the foreground. So I mean, that's really effective. That looks really good. Uh, I will show you what the shot looks like with the polarizer turned right down so you can compare those two. So one of the things I forgot to mention is where I was focusing for that shot. Now, I generally focus on my foreground. I want my foreground to be the sharpest element in my photograph. I think if your foreground is slightly out of focus, then it can be very distracting, very off-putting. Now, typically, I would be focusing about two meters away from the camera, and that generally gives me good front-to-back sharpness. But on this occasion, my foreground is so close to the camera that I'm focusing at about a meter away. And that means that there's a risk that my background is going to be slightly out of focus. And so what I've done as a precaution is I've taken a number of shots at different focusing points and I will blend those together in Photoshop. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how I go about doing that. This first shot has been completely premeditated. I knew exactly the composition that I wanted to shoot before I came onto location this morning. And now that it's in the bag, I'm gonna spend the rest of the morning having a little look around the reservoir, seeing if I can find any other interesting compositions. Right, welcome back. I have to say I had an absolutely brilliant morning at Kentmere. It's a really super place and I'm really happy with the image that I created that morning. So let's jump straight in 
to that process of stacking those two exposures together to create an image that's sharp from front to back. These are the two images that I'm going to stack. The image on the left hand side was shot with the focus on the foreground and the image on the right hand side has the focus on the background. Both images were taken at f11. In fact, apart from where I was focusing, the settings were completely identical. Now, if I zoom in on the foreground, you can see just how much sharper the image on the left-hand side is compared with the image on the right-hand side. And the same if I jump in on the background. You can see that the image on the right is a lot sharper than the image on the left. Now, this is the really important part. If I jump in right here in the middle of the image, just beneath where the reflection of the mountain finishes and those prominent rocks in the foreground begin, you can see that the focus is almost identical. Those images are almost identically sharp at that point. And that's really important for what's coming next. I should at this point mention that these images have already been fully edited in Lightroom. What I did was I took the first image and walked through my usual Lightroom workflow. I then copied those adjustments and pasted them onto the second image. So the first thing that we need to do is to open up these images in Lightroom. So with both of them selected, we right click and we go to edit in and then down to open as layers in Photoshop. Photoshop has now opened those images up as layers and the first thing that we want to do is to check to make sure that the bottom layer is the one that was focused on the background. That's because in a minute what we're going to do is to apply a gradient mask to the upper layer that will reveal the sharp mountains in the layer below. Now you'll notice that as I turn that top layer on and off that the images aren't perfectly aligned and that's because when I focused on the background it ever so slightly changed the focal length. So what we now need to do is to select both of the layers and go to Edit Auto Align Layers and Photoshop will then line those up as best it possibly can. With the layers now nicely aligned the next thing that we want to do is to add a new mask to the top layer and that's where we're going to apply our gradient. With that mask selected, we now want to go and select the gradient tool. And we want to make sure that we've got a black to white gradient selected. That's because when we paint this gradient onto that layer, the black at the top is going to cut through the top layer to reveal the layer below. The white at the bottom is going to mean that the top layer remains visible and we have that sharp foreground as well as that sharp background. When it comes to adding the gradient to the mask, what we want to do is we want to click, then drag down, and then release. And what that does is it tells Photoshop where we want the gradient to begin and end. Now you remember when we looked at those two images alongside each other, the level of sharpness was roughly the same at the point where the reflection finished and down as far as the top of those prominent foreground rocks. And so that's where we want our gradient to be. So I'm going to click at the bottom of the reflection, drag down to the top of those rocks, and then release. Having done that, you can now see that we have an image that's sharp both at the top and the bottom, both in the foreground and the background. You'll also notice that the top layer is ever so slightly smaller. So we have a little bit of a margin around the top. So what we need to do now is ever so slightly crop that image to remove that. Now that the image has been cropped, all that's left for us to do is to flatten those two layers and then save our final image back to Lightroom. And there you have it, there's our final image back in Lightroom. And I really like it, I'm really, really happy with it. I think that's a really simple way of focus stacking two exposures to create an image that's sharp from front to back. And I also think that it's a really simple, easy way to get into layer masking in Photoshop. So that's it for this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please do give it a thumbs up. That really helps. And hopefully you'll consider joining me for more videos in the future.